Hey y'all, we're going to do a video on how to value stocks or stunks as the kids say. And I'm just going to wing it and I'm going to do the whiteboard method just to make it interesting. I'm going to have some websites as well. but. I always like to start with how do you value the S&P because if you learn from the S&P it makes it a lot easier. So Schiller PE starting with the S&P 500 PE there are times when the S&P is expensive and there are times when the S&P is cheap and the S&P is a basket of stocks. It's also representative representative of the economy. So I don't want to go into the history, but if you're old enough, you remember recessions like 2008 or the slowdown in 2002, if you're old enough. Most likely you're not old enough, but Hopefully you're old enough to remember 2008 or maybe 2020 when everything was shut down. When there's panic, stocks are cheap. When everybody's optimistic, stocks are more expensive. And this is the P.E. ratio, the price divided by the earnings. A high number, not so good. A low number, better. However, when you do see the low number, people will be nervous and scared. And when you do see the high number, people will be feeling very good and talking about growth. This next slide here is the S&P earnings. Close the ad. And it's quite similar to the S&P chart. Obviously, over time, the economy gets bigger. The main reason is the government prints money. And that's why this was a question I always had as a kid. Why do things always go up? <clears throat> and part of the reason is they didn't always used to. Uh, historically, as innovation improves, you get deflation. But in a system where the banks print money, things always go up. At least they, they try to make it go up all the time. 2% they say, but usually you get more. The S&P on average grows 7 to 10%. I'm going to get it, I'm going to get to how to value stocks, but we got to use this information. So earnings go up, S&P goes up when the market is going into a tough period and there's panic and there's recessions, companies earn less and that's why for a temporary period stocks are cheaper. These are the best times to buy stocks, but not everybody has money. So just keep that in mind. That's that's price to earnings. I'm going to leave that there for now. We can cover price to sales, a few other formulas, but we're just going to look at PE first. Okay, so we've got price and you divide that by earnings and you're just trying to find out you know, is this a good deal? So earnings is on the bottom. Price, let's say the stock is $100. Somebody tells you, hey, it's 15 You know, my math isn't so good. Let me just, it should be 15. 100 divided by 15 or 8. 100. That's actually a pretty good <laughs> PE. That's a PE of six. So this would be a very attractive deal because historically, if we go back to PE, let's see, my, my head's in the way a little bit, but if you can see 15 PE to 10 PE historically is very good. And anything above that is very less good. So 
In this example, this would be a super cheap stock. If on the other hand, the price was 100 and the earnings was like, let's say four, that would not be as good. But actually that's, a lot of stocks right now are, are like that. So this would be a PE of 25. Now, we are just looking at PE. We are ignoring all the other information, which is quite useful. But I used to just look at these PEs, and I, I would think that's enough. But that actually isn't enough. Because what, what you'll, you'll learn later on is that when the PE is 6, although it looks cheap, it, it might be cheap for a reason. So they could have debt. They could have balance sheet issues. The business could be not as good, could be international risk. I'm not going to go into that, not in this video. And then alternatively, a 25 PE may not be bad. The other component that's not shown is growth. So if a company is not growing at all, 25 is expensive or we might be in a low rate environment. If a company is growing at 30%, this 25 is actually cheap because if a company can, and that's a hard, hard growth rate, if a company can grow at 30%, then every year this company will be 30% cheaper. So this 25 PE, won't be 25 next year if it's growing at that speed. It would, it would be like what, a, a, a two thirds of that, like 15 maybe. And a company owned for many years that grows at 30% will become huge and we want those. A company that doesn't grow, let's say over here it's, it's 0%. Can't draw on this. Let's say it's zero percent. Then it's gonna st it's actually gonna lose you money. They might pay a dividend, but they might have issues and may it may just stay flat, and you'll lose opportunity. So, PE alone doesn't tell the whole story. Just like PE alone and the S and P doesn't tell the whole story. But that's the number one. The first thing most investors look at when they're valuing stocks. That's PE. I think I'll just leave it there and I'll make another video on price to sales. But that's just PE, a quick overview. Growth is super important and you find out by, by reading some analyst reports or getting some, some more digging deeper. But PE alone doesn't tell the whole story, but it does tell you a lot. It usually it tells you that there's an implied growth or that investors see something and we need to find out more. On the next video, I'll cover price to sales and I'll show how a small company over time becomes a bigger one and how maybe they don't have earnings, but um, they'll have a price to sales ratio and then some expected growth rate. We'll see. See you on the next one.